Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is, man. It's your boy DJ Damage, man. Back at it again. Damage Control Podcast, man. Episode 28. Mm-hmm. Listen, man. You got off the bus, right? You would go home. You would throw your backpack. You turn the TV on. And you know what you would watch. You know what I'm saying? You see this man right here. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? DJ Hello. What's going on with you, my brother? How you doing? Man, I'm just glad that... uh I'm good. You're good. Hopefully, all your viewers are good in 2020 in this crazy ass year. Right. We're all trying to make it through. Uh, oh. But, you know, thank you very much for having me on here tonight. Oh, for sure. I appreciate you coming on, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, definitely somebody I've been wanting to hit up to have on here. You know what I mean? Um, Rap City was definitely shit, one of my favorite shows, if not everybody in here's favorite show. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. Um, Talk to me about that, man. How 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 did you get into DJing? And you know, we'll get into the whole rap city thing later. But how'd you get into DJing, man? Honestly, you know, like how can I put this? I don't want to say I'm a full on control freak, but if if I'm feeling like I'm not satisfied with something, and and you know, and looking back, like I don't want this to seem like I'm shitting on nobody, but. I was just kind of dissatisfied with what I would hear when I would be out in, in regards to music. And the only thing that, that I could do, say, I right, well shit, you know, I could I could be in, in the corner mad with me mugging, screw face, mm, fuck this, or, <laughs> you know, yeah. I could figure out how I could do this so that way, at least like for myself and people who wanted to hear something different, you know, we would have that opportunity. So that's what ultimately led me to DJ. That's what's up, man. How old was you when you first like fell in love with this thing, man? Man, yeah, I was, I was still on the younger side. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, a, a lot of us, you know, picked that, that, you know, that thing up a little, a little bit earlier. I mean, now, in, in modern times, you could go to a Scratch Academy, you could, you know, look up YouTube videos, but, you know, there was none of that, you know, at that point. Um, you know, to, to be quite honest, even to catch somebody who had 12s was, you know, kind of like if you had 1200s, you know, at one point, you was like, oh. You know, yeah, 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 I already know. Yeah, because it was running like 500 a piece then. So in order to have two, and then you had to have, um, you know, the mixer to go along with it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you was, you was an easy 1500, you know, and, and you know, that, that 1500 is a lot now. So imagine what it was, you know, in the era. Oh, for real, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, nowadays, the DJing has gotten easier in a sense because you don't got to carry oh. no more. You know what I mean? It's like... Nah. But, it, you know, it, I still respect when I see DJs with DJing, rocking still, rocking 1200s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, rocking, yeah. rocking the old, you know what I'm saying? Like, just taking it back to that, like, turntablism and shit like that. Mm-hmm. That plays a big key in the DJing and hip-hop, so. You know what yeah, I mean? for sure. It's, 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 you know, it is part of the culture. Facts. Facts. Yeah. So, how did Rap City come along? How did you end up on that? Well, you know what? Uh, my name is Lynx. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I've always been connected to a whole lot of things. And, you know, uh, at one point in time, uh, I, I was very f- friendly and familiar with the music director over at BET. Mm. And uh, he himself was a DJ, still is, to be honest. Um, but he happened to be the music director at, at BET. And during that time, you know, BET had really done something which is unprecedented by bringing in DJs. I shouldn't say, pardon me, I should say bringing in DJs allowing DJs to come, they wasn't bringing nobody. <laughs> you know, you yeah. brought yourself. They just gave you the opportunity to get on. So um, so I knew that they were doing that. Um, and I never liked being one of those dudes to be like, yo, put me on. You know, I always, you know, rather ask, hey, you know, I know they're doing this. Could you, you know, let me know the channels to go about how to do it? You know, because I've always felt like, you know, when this dude worked as hard as he did, my man Kelly G, you know, to, to put himself in that position, you know, coming out of Chicago. I, and I already knew that everybody and their brother was like, yo, 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 yo. Like I said, I, I want to come at it a little bit different. Like, I know there's a process. Put me on to the process. I'm not asking for nothing more than that. So, right. um, you know, it was a good, still a great friend of mine today. And he was like, yo, listen, you know, call this person. Boom. You know, hey, I'm going to call him, you know, for you. Let him know that you're my man. And one thing led to the next. So I became a, a featured DJ, you know, on the show. And a lot of people think like I went trying to become, you know, like I went to school or something like that to become like the host of Rap City. That's not how it happened at all. Um, I never you thought it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, you know, the, the, um, 
the vice president at the time, the president of the program, I believe, actually, you know, uh, I just went across to see some people that I knew that were, were in the office. See, like at that point in New York, it was um, on 57th Street. There was a studio on this side, uh, on the south side, and it was the offices on the north side of the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just went across and, you know, real talk, my thing was just like, yo, I just want to let this dude know, thank you on behalf of all of us as DJs for giving us this link you know, to, to, to get put on because it was a huge deal at the time. There was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. There was no, you know, no nothing. Like you said, yo, everybody used to have to go because it was like a moment. It was like catching a live sporting moment today. It's, it's like you missed it at four o'clock. If you you're dead. If you're dust. Five, five before 106 apart, you're done. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, it was a, it was a huge deal for DJs. Of that shit back in the day, so <laughs> no doubt, it was a huge look for DJs. So like, I just really wanted to let him know, like, yo, listen, we collectively appreciate this. And homie was like, oh no, I know who you are. Yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're gonna hire you. And he said it just like that. Straight up. As a matter of fact, um, Orlando was in New York. Orlando Davis at, from from Wild was in New York at the time and he came up to the office with me and he said it right in front of him. Like, I swear to God, like he was the witness. I was like, I didn't know what to say. I thought it was like, yo, who's punking me here? Like, you know, because again, I didn't- I should cut you out. Oh, you about to come out the corner or something. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm like, yo, I didn't, y'all, I didn't realize y'all were hiring and I did, I, well, I didn't fill out no application. I didn't talk to nobody about it. So, I mean, it was just, a, it was a huge, huge, huge blessing, man. And, um, you know, I, I've always been thankful for it and I never forgot, um, you know, how, how it happened and all the people that, that were, Bless me to put me in position to, to allow that to happen. Yes, man, let me tell you something about something about that show, bro. Me personally, one of the biggest things in this culture to me. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. that, that was in high school, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like after ticket, I'm, after ticket got off, stuff like that, and you know you came on, and it's like I, I was in I was in middle school, going to high school throughout. You know, so it was my whole damn near my whole childhood, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was a super fan of the show, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank like, you. what was your favorite interview? Um, wow. Remember. Yeah, man. Man, listen, I, I've had some, uh, some real dope ones. Uh, I did Nas at Blue Note um, Jazz Club. Uh, that was a phenomenal one. I had, um, you know, Common on there. Com <laughs> and I don't know if it's like, and, and, and coming from Common, I'm like, yo, man, you're a light-skinned nigga too, so wait a minute. Like, you know, like he... It was almost like he didn't know, he, he was surprised that I knew who he was. I'm like, yo, bro, come on, man, sold by the pound. Like, you know, yeah. bro, I've been playing your joints since since you came out on Relativity. So, and he just looked at me like bugged out. Like, I'm like, yeah, man, don't let, I mean, don't let the light skin and good hair fool you, my man. Yo, I'm ahead. <laughs> you know, kind of like the same thing happened. This was an interview, but um, at the time, a uh, little brother had, had come out with their album called The Minstrel Show. And they featured a dude named Joe Scudder on there. And I happened to be out. They were making their, their promo run in New York. And I was like, yo, Joe, man, yo, you killed on a, on a joint. And he looked at me like I was an alien. Like, yo, bro, like, how the hell do you know who I am? I'm like, yo, bro, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, pause. I'm like, yo, I do this for real. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are some great ones. Um, God bless the dead, man. Um, going to Port Arthur, Texas with UGK was a phenomenally huge, phenomenally huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kanye used to be a highlight until the slavery was a choice thing, but I ain't even gonna go there right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That one right so, there. But, yeah, but now we had, we had a bunch of great ones. I did a Fat Joe in my hood. I, I did uh, Jim Jones in my hood in Harlem. Uh, so I mean, like, it, oh, Take take aside the, the TV aspect of it, Man, I, yeah, but it, it was just like the, the experience um, was just phenomenal and something that, you know, th these are memories I'll never forget. That's fire, bro. And, and like you just said it, memories you'll never forget, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. see, think about, and think about it in this industry back then, you said it, you didn't have no internet, you no social mm -hmm. media. It was just, you had to be outside. Like people talking about nowadays, oh, we outside, this and that. No, you really had to be outside back then. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like it's just it's just completely different, you know. Um, Thanks. But I also seen you you do the Fuse Ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fuse, uh, yeah. So um, you know, transitioning from BET, you know, into other things. Um, 
you know, I actually had a great opportunity over there for a limited time over at Fuse. Uh, you know, Fuse obviously was never like, it never got to that next level of, okay. of, of programs. But, uh, you know, again, that was a great experience because that was a little bit more mainstream. It wasn't so hip hop centric. Right. And, um, you know, ultimately between you and me and whoever's watching, uh, you know, there, there was ultimately they were looking to me for a hip hop show there, but the powers that be decided they wanted a female, you know, in that role. So they ended up going with a, um, a good sister, you know, nothing but love for it. And, you know, I'm glad that she, she got that look and she got that shine. And, and you know, it is what it is, you know, like, um, you know, Fuse is still up today, so I'm happy for him. Move on, or like, just, you know, just, it, is, it is what it is, bro. You know, the journey, oh, no doubt. The journey continues, man. Absolutely. So, so coming up, uh, where are you from originally? I was born in, in Flushing, Queens, New York. Okay. How was it like in Queens coming up, man? Well, um, you know, so I'm, I'm really like a hybrid. So, you know, my, my whole entire life has been basically on the East Coast between New York and Florida. So well, I'm from Rhode Island. So Rhode Island and Florida, back and forth. Right? Yeah, that, that's it. So, you know, like even, you know, the last, man, um, number of years, you know, I've been down in Miami for now, like you know, about eight years before that. I was in New York for 10. I spent, you know, obviously, you know, a good portion of my life in, you know, in the Tampa area. And, right. um, and, you know, again, before that, you know, coming up in, um, you know, Queens, my brother still lives in Manhattan today. You mm. know, he ain't never leaving. Uh, it could be an earthquake, <laughs> a hurricane, uh, a nuclear That's bomb drop. He's not that. leaving. <laughs> Aunts and shit like that up there and, and uncles, that they ain't leaving for nothing. Nothing. They ain't asking. But, uh, but, you know, in, in, in retrospect, you know, like I really, I didn't appreciate being a hybrid as much then as I do now because, you know, just the sensibilities and the opportunity to learn, you know, um, a, a lot culturally, you know, it, it's pretty dope. And I, and I know there's a lot of us. The networking as well, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, you know, I think like being able to, to embody kind of like, you know, the positive sides of a hustle coming from, you know, up top and being able to, you know, to engage with it, you know, and, in the South has been something that a lot of people have done, you know, like, you know, my man, DJ Mars comes to mind, DJ Trauma, who's currently the, the DJ for Dave Chappelle. You know, these are all, you know, New Yorkers who relocated not to Florida, but to, to Atlanta. Yeah. And, you know, so like to have the best of all those worlds, you know, a lot of these dudes, you know, have been very instrumental in a lot, breaking a lot of Southern rappers and, and whatnot. So to, to bring the knowledge of the game with them down South to be able to, to kickstart a lot of things has been right. really dope. And, you know, and I think like, actually that's a story that, that yeah, kind of needs to be told about the people who, you know, like uh, have like relocated or, you know, people like us hybrids. Right, right. Because this is like you, you're introduced to a certain culture and then you're not ripped, but like ripped, yeah, to a whole different place where you got to learn a whole different culture. Yeah. You know, yeah. between middle school and high school, I lived in like three different states. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like five, six different cities. So I was like, never really, I felt like my parents were in the army or something. <laughs> like, they just love to move, you know, they just love to travel and see the world. They weren't mm -hmm. able to when they were younger, so it's like, shit, y'all are right. old. Let's live life, you know? But, mm -hmm. yeah, and then between Florida, up north, and Texas. That was okay. For a while, you know what I mean? Just going back and forth, shit. But, but yeah, right. man. So, like, talk to me about, like, what's been, like, some crazy experiences at BET, man, like, when you was there? Like, like see anybody, like, oh. freaking out, like, turn up in the office or like anything like that like anything like you know what i mean you know i really don't have any of those type of stories necessarily um you know because the studio and the office were like on different like i said different sides yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so um and, and you know I, I pretty much try to stay drama free you know because i always felt that you know that's good let me whatever's going on over there man let that shit be over there i'm trying to hold this here down and, and the more I can keep, you know, about my business, that was really what always worked well for me. Mm. So, unfortunately, I don't got none of the drama stories. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, it's just like, you know, you never really get to, you really, you never get to ask these type of things, man. So, yeah. another question. Well, about, well before that, I, I do have, this wasn't really a drama story, but, you know, one of the, I, I, I can't say this, you know, one of the, the, the Rap City appearances, interviews that we never got the chance to do that I, I always regretted was we were supposed to have game on the show, uh, but it was at Hot 97, there was the whole like little shootout, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. 
that whole that derailed that whole thing. And I was really looking forward to having a game on the show because, you know, um, you know, especially that time coming from the West Coast, he was such a different breed of MC. And I'm you know? fine. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and yeah, that would have been a good one. That, that oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, unfortunately, you know what happened happened, and we right. never really were able to, um, you know, to get him back on the show. But um, you know that that was that was one that was kind of like, damn, son, you're killing me, man. Like we was we was gonna tear it down. You went on the show, but you weren't the host no more. I think it was. I want to say it was. Um, fuck, it was like one of the newer, like before the show. I don't remember. I think it was like a host, the host after you or something. And he did happen okay. in the city, though, right? Got it. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm not 100%. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I think but, you know, he out on there. I think there was a video of him freestyling on there. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that documentary album would have been epic to, to come on it for that. Because that right. still is his magnum you know, opus. That, it was at that time. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, let me ask you a question. And I'm pretty sure everybody watching wants to know. Why do you feel like that show got canceled? Cause it was such like an impactful thing to the culture. Imagine now with social media being a thing now. Imagine how like bigger that could have gotten. Um, you know, it's funny. So I, I just had uh, so I'm a I'm a long lifelong Los Angeles Laker fan, right? And one of the producers of the show, actually, he was the head producer named Matt Smith. He's from LA, and and like that was one of our things. Like, yo, you know, like it didn't matter if. If we was banging hard, if you know, like whatever, like it, you know, we may have been, you know, down the dumps, Kobe may retire, but you know, we, you know, we held it down for that purple and gold like that. So obviously, with winning the champ, the chip, you know, just this Sunday, I finally got him on the horn today, and so you know, I haven't talked to him probably in about like three or four years, and you know, so you know, we're just like catching up, and inevitably, you know, you know, we were talking about that and. And I, I feel that, unfortunately, BET didn't fulfill its full promise. And, and one of those ways was that it didn't see what was coming around the curve, right? So if you were watching, as you said, you know, back in, at one point in, in history, you had to get off the bus, you had to get home, you had to hurry up so you can get that content, right? Um, as YouTube became a thing and content became something that became more readily available for people to get, you know, on, on their phones, on their computers, when they wanted it, right? So, you know, I'll never forget, you know, one of the first videos I ever watched on, on YouTube was The Roots, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just being able to just pop in, type up what you wanted, and boom, it was there, right? Even at that stage. So I think, you know, that played a big part in it. Like music videos, like, like yeah, that's right. Going back to that, like you mentioned in YouTube now, that's, that's true. Like, not only for the show, but people watched it for the music videos. Like, if you... Mm -hmm. You missed 106 in part, the top 10, it was over with. You got to wait till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true, man. Like, that's right. Thinking about the music videos, like you waited like, damn, well, I wonder I wonder what video is coming up next. That was always like the yeah. exciting, exciting parts about Rap City. Like, all right, there's Jim Jones video played. What's next? What's next? What's next? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and ultimately, you know, you were able to pick what you wanted to watch and you didn't have to wait for like five minutes worth of commercials. Yeah. So I th that obviously really impacted. And then also, too, you know, like the DVD, DVD game was coming on real strong where, you know, cats were like, you know, like really doing a lot of hard work, you know, getting out there to get exclusive, you know, content for people. And then once again, once that goes online and, you know, you hit a couple of keystrokes and boom, you got it. Now, our taping schedule for BET sometimes went where we may tape something on a, a, a Tuesday and it may not air until the following Thursday or Friday. You do it here? Yeah. Now, if you got to compete with, you know, things like Instagram, YouTube, they want it you right know, blogs. Yeah, they want it right there. Yo, so, while you're filming it, they want it. You know what yeah. I mean? I get it. I get it's it. available. Yeah. yeah. It's an, avail so, more of an availability issue. Like, people yeah. get it now. I get what you're saying. Yeah, man, because it's like, yeah, it just, it faded, it faded with the times, I guess you could say. Yeah. Like, the, BET failed, like a lot of places, I don't want to single them out, um, but they failed to, to be able to, to strategize ways to keep people engaged outside of, you know, sports and news. Sports and news are the two things that you really do have to watch those certain vehicles in order to, you know, to vibe with. So I've I mentioned, you know, the Lakers playing the heat, you know, to see that chip 
Like you don't want to miss that boat. So you're going to watch it in real time. Right. Because you pick up your phone, whether you want to find out or not, it's going to be there. You know? So that's when people are going to watch, you know, certain things. The election is coming up November 3rd, right? People are going to be watching that in real time. They're not going to, you know, come back and say on the 5th or 6th, yo, let me see what was going on. So those are the two things that have been safeguarded. But, you know, they needed to find a way. And it's been challenging. I mean, listen, you know, we're, we're now in a day and age where people are used to going to see what they want to see when they want to see it. Yo, Netflix drops a new series. Boom, it's right there. You're ready to go. You can watch it when you want. You can stop it in the middle, come back, pick it up right where you left off, you know, so whatever you want. Thing. That was my next thing to say. And imagine all the episodes being on Netflix, like them bringing them back and making like oh, season, yeah. season two. See, that would be fire, bro. No, that would be fire. It. <laughs> It'd be a bag for you. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I, I mean, that'd be great because, I mean, again, they have the content. So why not do something with it as opposed to just sitting on it? But, you know, somebody, you know, up there has to ultimately see, see the wisdom in that and, and then pull uh, the trigger. Make this happen. We need a percentage, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> sal salute to that. Salute, man. You already know, man. But um, yeah. So you said bouncing around from New York to Florida, you know, mm -hmm. you got a chance to see best of both worlds in a sense. Like you got to get engaged with the South culture as it was coming up, and I know that was a, a big thing too, especially with yeah. rap, rap City bringing the South artists when they started embracing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How was that? Like. Well, to, I ain't gonna lie to you. Florida with the well, New York vibe. You get what I'm saying? I get it because I'm from up north too. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like going back up north with the because I know some Florida, Florida like rubs on you. So no matter where you go, you could be you could be you could be from New York. You could be from Cali. As soon as you come to Florida, mm -hmm. that accent. Look, look at you. Hear me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can hear a little bit of Florida, my boys. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, it was interesting because the time that I I, I, I relive here back to New York, and um, you know, so. As, as like a real beats and rhymes dude, I was looking forward to getting back and being able to to rock with that, you know, vibe that I've been looking for. And next thing I know, I'm getting asked to play, you know, Laffy Taffy. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but I had that, and that transition was so crazy. Like all the day, like it turning from, you had to be able to rap like the DMXs mm -hmm. and like the mm -hmm. Jameses and like, you know what I'm saying? That type of music to, the dance records, you know what I'm saying? The, the Soldier yeah. Boys and the, like, the Laugh yeah. Attack, like you said, like, ima like, I can imagine a DJ in that time, because I, I was younger, you know what I'm saying? So I wasn't in that, in that light yet, like, ima I can imagine you at the club getting those kind of requests, and you're like, what the fuck is going on right now? And that yeah, bro, I'm like, yo. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I came back home, like, I came back to the Mecca, like, I, I'm, I wanted to play the beats and rhymes, and. You know, and like, I'll never forget, like the first time I played, I was like, yo, I can't believe I had to come back to New York to play this. And then I dropped it. And it was just like, my heart was broke a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, you, you got to be able to, to move with it with the error and the time. So, you know, right. that's ultimately what the people want. You know, as a DJ, you know, you play to the crowd. No, you know? exactly. Yeah, you, you, find, you find those moments to, to do you and you find those moments to, to try to influence and, and sway people a certain way. But ultimately, you know, you know, people want to have a good time, and it's our job to make sure that, that they do. That's facts. That's facts. What do you, what do you got coming up? So, um, 2020 has been a, a very interesting year, but one of the highlights is uh, I've recently been brought on for, with ESPN and been working uh, you know, with them on, on their tennis broadcast at the U.S. Open. Okay. And we're looking at uh, hopefully being able to do a lot more in 2021, the Australian Open. So, for those that don't know, yeah, I'm a tennis dude. You know, I'm like I, I've always historically kind of done something different. So, um, yeah, that's been one of my passions, one of my, um, one of the things I've always just, you know, loved, for, you know, forever. And the opportunity to fuse kind of like, you know, my, my entertainment lifestyle as far as hip hop and music and whatnot and, and, and that sport. Uh, yeah. And finally, finally, after, you know, a, a long, long, you know, road to get there, it, it started to come. So, um, hoping that the next thing. So it's uh, imagine the Super Bowl for tennis, but there's like four of them throughout the course of the year. So the U.S. Open is the last one of the year. Um, the Australian Open it starts in January. It goes to Fr France in May, and then uh, England in July. So the next big one we're gonna have is is January. And depending upon the COVID situations right. and what right. Australia allows to happen. And whatnot that's going to be the next one but um yeah so we're, we're officially you know on with the worldwide leader and uh looking forward to making the, you know the most of that and um you know 
that transition just from, you know, kind of, I don't want to say a narrow, you know, scope of music and entertainment, but to, you know, something even bigger and broader. So, you know, uh, it's, it's been a fantastic opportunity and looking forward to making the most of it. That's dope, man. Definitely. You get to tour the world as well. You know what I'm saying? Australia, you know what I mean? Just different countries and shit. Just, yeah. You know, um, you know, yeah, especially, I, you know, love the sport as well too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I've done it. I've done the touring of the world, you know, as a DJ, but now to be able to do it right. um, within, yeah. Yeah, in, in this way. And then, you know, still, you know, um, you know I got to put some some calls in and try to make some things happen. But like, yo, if I'm going to be in Australia, I may as well, you know, get in right. <laughs> somewhere well, and start rocking. I mean, yeah, yeah. What's, your, what's been your favorite country to DJ at? Man, um, you know, Germany was pretty dope. I've been um, hearing that. We're supposed to be going in February or April, one of them two. But yeah, now nah, listen, man. Um, you know, and I gotta tell you, man, Germany in the summer is phenomenal, bro. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's just it, that, that that the whole country comes alive because they only really get like eight, maybe 10 weeks of the summer, so you know, they go hard. Yeah. Um, Berlin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they go hard, bro. Mm. Um, uh, Berlin is a phenomenal city, I uh, I yeah, Col- as well. yeah, Cologne is a, is a beautiful city. Um, Cologne has this ill church, man, that's like 800 years old. It took up 500 years to build. Um, I mean, I remember I, I was on tour with Angie Martinez at the time. And I remember the hotel that we stayed in was across the river from the church. And the way that the lights hit it and everything, yo, I mean, it shit didn't even look real. I was like, yo, man, this shit look like it. I don't know if it's painted. Uh, I don't know if it's a movie, but it just, it, it was amazing. Right. Uh, so, you know, G- Germany is a, is a great, great, great place. Uh, Stuttgart in the South, that's, you know, like that's their financial center. Hamburg, um, you know, it's a great place. The people are fantastic. And then, like, you know, they, they really love their hip hop. Uh, so, yeah. I was just talking about this on one of my last episodes. It's like everywhere outside the States loves hip hop more than the States do in a sense because they don't get it. You mm-hmm. know, like, mm-hmm. that's what you were saying on demand. They want it, they want it now. They don't get that availability that we do. Yeah, and, and it's like the smallest artists could go over there and they treat them like you know what I mean like it's crazy yeah. no you mentioned 100 you mentioned you DJ you DJ for um with Angie Martinez what other what, who else have you been a tour DJ for um so I did some work uh once upon a time with Wyclef um I also did uh Mario for a little while um yeah so it wasn't a lot of artists I worked with in that regard but yeah. um, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it was still you know all love. It was still fun, uh, you know. Of course, they, of course. it's just it's different giving the people the energy too. You know what I mean? Like oh yeah. And also like the like me, I, I love the tour DJ. You know what I'm saying? I've DJ for a couple a couple artists, but like just that energy of you being able to rock with that artist, and mm-hmm. you know. And I've always been yeah. one. Like for example, I, I toured DJ for Cassidy for a while. Beanie Siegel. Mm-hmm. They never knew what I was gonna play. But it never, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so that's dope too, in a sense, because it's like you, you know, you rock, you, you not only the crowd, but like you surprise the artist. Like, I had Casper yeah. looked at me like, what the fuck? How did you know <laughs> play that? Like, I mean, you know? Yeah. So, man, let the people know where they can find you, they can follow you, you know what I'm saying? And everything like that, man. Keep up with your day to day, man. Man, I, I keep it real simple, man. Everything is at DJ M A D L I N X. Um, that's the Facebook, that's the Instagram, that's like anything that's coming SoundCloud is all at DJ M A D L I N X. Thankfully, there's only one, and that's me. So I try to keep it all easy to find and easy to rock with, man. Facts, facts. You got any shout outs before you, we get up out of here, man? Man, I want to shout you out, man. I appreciate you, you know, thinking enough of me to, to bring me on your platform and, uh, you know, make it happen. And hey, listen, man, it's, it's always a great honor to, to talk about the history and, and to know that how much people cared about. You know, to show Rap City that even after all this time, you know, people still, you know, have, have those memories and it meant something to them, man. So, and to be, just to be a part of that, that crew who, who held that showdown is uh, something that uh, I don't take lightly. And um, I'm, I'm you just, bro. You should, because that's something I tell you. That's yeah. something that our, like, it's just crazy because, like, you know, when you, when, like, our parents lived through something that we, we can't relate to because they lived through it. Our grandparents mm-hmm. lived through it. Like, my kids never lived through that. So, it's just like, damn, mm-hmm. like. You know, like, you know, my, my, my eight year old's like, what's that? I'm watching like old free, like Cam's freestyle video. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. what's, 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 what's there? Like, 
my son's like, what's this? I'm like, oh, you don't know about this. You know, you're <laughs> old, nigga, even saying this shit, but it's like, yeah, bro. Yeah. Definitely appreciate yeah, man. what you contributed for the culture, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming on here, my brother. I appreciate it, man. So, like All right, said, bro. Bless. And big up to you and like, and, and keep it, keep up the go work, man. Keep keep your movement growing, bro. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Like I said, man, it's Damage Control Podcast. Shout out to Hip Hop Everything, man. And shout out to Dude Clothing. It's, D- it's Damage Control Episode 28. Appreciate you. All right. Brother. Yes, sir. Peace, no, my brother. Yes, sir. All right.